Judge Lauren rage moments on paternity court. Oh, Antoine, that I wanted to be in a relationship with him, and he turned me down because he was still in love with the mother of his other child. So, <laughs> so when that time happened, I got upset and I started messing with another guy. Okay, and this was after you were already intimate with Mr. Morris. Yes, Your Honor. So Antoine Morris is in court today to find out if both of Imani Thorpe's twin daughters. London and Paris are his biological children or just one of them. Mr. Morris says he took an at-home DNA test that gave shocking results. It was bassinets here, strollers there, car seats, uh, moved her into a family member house uh, during her pregnancy, uh, tried to make her as comfortable as possible. She hungry every day. I, <laughs> I gotta feed her. Uh, that's the least you could do. <laughs> Mr. Morris claims he went all out when he found out that Ms. Thorpe was pregnant. He was beyond excited to be a father and did everything a good father would do. Mr. Morris was there for the birth and things seemed to be good. Child ended up being tested because they only tested one. I called the DNA pl uh, place after and I kind of explained the situation. Pleaded wrong or I didn't have enough or whatever, then it would have came back in a... Okay, inconclusive. Yes, ma'am. I say just. She kept sleeping with Mr. Morris and eventually got pregnant. Mr. Morris was over the moon and was there throughout the pregnancy as well as birth. But one day when he was at the drugstore, out of nowhere, he decided to get a DNA test. So what happens after he gets these results back? He comes to you and tells you he did it? No, Your Honor, I was at work at the time. He actually texted me and told me that the DNA test came back and that the twins were not his. Um, at the time, I didn't respond automatically because, like I said, I was at work. So he ended up getting very upset and ended up posting it all over. Miss Thorpey had no idea that Mr. Morris did this whole DNA test. When Mr. Morris saw the DNA test go negative, he instantly texted Miss Thorpey while she was busy at work. What's even crazier is that Mr. Morris posted about it on social media. The uh, no results, I got a response that was like she knew. She had just said, when I said, I got a test done on the twins, they are not mine. And her response was, oh. Oh! Your Honor, on my defense, I was at work at the time. I, I was The results said that there was 0% probability, but Judge Lake tells Mr. Morris he didn't even use the swabs properly, so the results aren't exactly accurate. Nonetheless, the results have him confused and he doesn't know what to do. By another woman at the same time. The same so reason when I was telling Imani why I couldn't be in a relationship with her, because I was in a long-time relationship with someone else. We was on a break then, oh. but... But not that, not too much of a break, because you obviously had sex with her. Yes, Your Honor. Is that baby yours? Yes. That was enough to get him packing, and he didn't see them for over 18 months. What made him come back was a picture of one of the twins someone had sent him, and he revealed that his youngest daughter and the twins looked almost the same. But... Oh, you told him to, Miss Thorpe? No, Your Honor. They just developed that because he's been along, he's been around since day one. So with him being around so much, they asked was Twan their dad, but I told him, I told him no. This is a mess. The sad part is he only sees a resemblance between his daughter and London, not Paris. And with the bitch DNA test still in his mind, he didn't know what to think. When asked about his relationship with the kids, he says he's around them. We're talking about facts. Do you know for certain if Mr. Morris is your twin's biological father? It's a yes or no? Do you know for certain? No, Your Honor. There. You all just been circling around this doubt, circling around this dysfunction, circling around all of this confusion. Judge Lake says they should be ashamed of putting kids in a situation like that. Ms. Thorpe says she told him that because she wasn't sure if Mr. Morris was the father. This further sends Judge Lake into a rage after hearing all this. Are not the father. are not the father. <laughs> Ms. Thorpe? At this point, Judge Lake has had enough of the both of them and decides to call in the paternity results for both the twins with Paris first and then London. Mr. Morris was right about Paris not being his, but turns out London isn't his biological child either. So, Ms. Sism, how certain are you 
that Anthony is the father. I'm 2,000% certain, Your Honor, that Anthony is the father of Osiris. And you are emotional already. Yep. I have a grandson that's eight months old. He needs his father. I lost my dad when I was two. So I know what it's like now. In a case of babies having babies, Destiny Sissom is in court today with her mother, Marilyn, to prove that Anthony Taylor is the father of eight-month-old Osiris, while Osiris's mother, Brenda, believes that it isn't. She was sneaking at my house. She was coming over here lying, conniving, saying, I have a 14-year-old daughter at home. She was sneaking over there, hollering about she was coming over there to see my daughter. That's a lie, Your Honor. My son was going to school. How are you going to tell me what's a lie? Because, you Your Honor, Honor you didn't they even was care. having sex in her you house. You didn't even care and she, your daughter What type of parent is she? she Destiny tells Judge Lake that none of their mothers knew that the two were having sex because whenever her mother called to ask her where she was, Destiny said she was at a friend's place. Brenda, on the other hand, has some choice words for Destiny. Both of them teenagers having sex. My point is exactly. That's the plot. And I didn't know. That's the plot. So the reason why we're here is to get down to the bottom of if this child is really your grandchild. Because I know you want to know that. Yes, ma'am. Now, Destiny, before I go further, was my summation of the plot correct? Yeah. It takes Judge Lake a few seconds to get some order in the courtroom, and she says that both sides are pointing fingers at the other, but no one's taking responsibility. She says that no one is paying attention to the fact that they plan to have sex. Yes, it's Anthony's baby, no, and it's not. that's what we're here for, to get this deal. It's not my grandbaby. Okay, you ain't, don't claim him. You ain't claim him in eight months. Don't claim him now. Y'all ain't did nothing for him. I've been taking care of this baby. They don't do nothing for him. That's a lie. They don't do nothing for him. Try no. All right. This is not my grandbaby. At the end of the day, this when it became me, ladies, ladies, my, my daughter grandma. had big ladies. Lady. Brenda says she never suspected them because she saw Destiny with another guy a few weeks before she told Anthony about the pregnancy and assumed that she was just one of her daughter's friends. Marilyn says that before she knew about Anthony Destiny. Yes, it's Anthony's baby, no, and it's not. that's what we're here for, to get this deal. It's not my grandbaby. Okay, you ain't, don't claim him. You ain't claim him in eight months? Don't claim no, him now. Y'all ain't did nothing for him. I've been taking care of this baby. They don't that's do not nothing for him. That's a lie. They don't do nothing for him. Sure, no. All right. It's not my grandbaby. It's not my grandbaby. Ladies, ladies. My daughter had big ladies. Ladies, ladies, ladies. You're saying, Miss Sism, your daughter had big dreams for her life. Yes, she did. Dreams to do what? My daughter is a senior this year. She was going to college to be a pediatrician and a lawyer. Now she cannot do that because she has... Marilyn is just sad that Destiny won't be able to pursue her dreams of becoming a lawyer and a pediatrician because she has to take care of the baby. But Judge Lake says they're all just kids and the mothers should have done a better job of keeping track of where and who they were with. I had a mouth period. I ended up throwing up. Anthony said, you should go to the hospital because I think you're pregnant. I went and they said I was pregnant. When I found out, I went to her house. And when I walked through the door and I had my papers, she said, let me guess, you're pregnant. I said, yes. So she called her husband and said, well, Destiny's pregnant, but we don't know if it's Anthony. Marilyn then reveals that Brenda knew the kids were sleeping around because according to Destiny, Brenda had asked them if they were using condoms and gave a bunch to Anthony as well. Judge Lake decides it's best they talk about how the pregnancy happened. No. Pregnancy? You the Is doctor. Anthony with you? Yes. yes. He came to appointments with you? Yes. And when the baby, baby was born, were, was he at the he hospital? He was there. Anthony, yes, we were all there. there. Anthony and cut was the there. He cut the cord and everything. She it. even came without nobody inviting her. Came where? To the house, Piddle. Don't say you didn't. Wait a minute. Because they escorted you, you out. Me and Destiny for. had her out. Even though Anthony had his reservations about having a kid, in the end, he told Destiny to go through with the pregnancy because he could be killed any day with the amount of people after him and she should have something to remember him by. She has me removed out the I hospital sure I so sure she can get honest. my son to no. sign this. This is a birth certificate. My son ain't old enough to be doing all you this. You believe she yes. had you removed from the hospital yes. strategically yes. because yes. they wanted to coerce right. your son into That's signing the I birth certificate. You on the right no, today. Brenda lashes out at Marilyn and says that when she came to the hospital to see the child, Marilyn asked a security guard to escort her out. Even though Anthony was present at the time of birth, Brenda believes that it's not his. Miss Sism, the mothers have been going back at it. It has gotten so negative and so volatile that when your daughter was in the hospital having the baby as a teen, you didn't feel comfortable to bring the energy that Ms. Riley brings into the hospital room. Right. Now, I'm ready to hear from Anthony. 
Ron, please escort Anthony into- Judge Lauren calls out the mothers for being extremely hostile and cruel during serious and rough times like this. Ms. Sisman reveals that she didn't feel comfortable bringing in negative energy in the hospital, which was understandable. The things that I was like going through and like by my cousin dying and everything else is like, I wanted a baby because I feel like one day it was gonna be time for me to die. And I want it like, I want it. I wanted just like another seed in this world. So I decided to have a baby. And I believe you telling the truth. After that roller coaster of arguments, Judge Lake calls in Anthony for his testimony. He says that he's Osiris's father and he wanted to have a kid just so that one day if he was killed, a piece of him was still there. I love him in my heart, so why not do anything that, that makes him happy? Baby. And this is nothing against Anthony because he seems like a lovely young man. Yes. You don't give up your life and the possibilities for your future and everything you can be just to make somebody else happy. Judge Lake applauds Anthony for speaking the truth, even though his reasoning wasn't all that sound. Judge Lake then asks Destinay if she had such huge dreams, why did she throw them away, considering she's now stuck with a much bigger responsibility now. Lack of understanding in which you approach this entire situation, you all, we gotta do better. And truly, we still don't know definitively if this is his biological child. Are there any other possible fathers until I get these results? Judge Lauren was just baffled by the immaturity and lack of understanding in this case as a child's life was literally on the line. Judge Lauren doesn't play around and rightfully encourages everyone to do better and improve. Are his father. Care of me. No, I got another. And I'm going to keep taking care yeah, of you. And at the end of the day, that is my grandson. I'm still going to take care of him. Can't stop me. Destiné and Anthony are over the moon when the results say that he is indeed the father. But even after hearing the good news, the two mothers continue to bicker with Marilyn, saying she'll never let Brenda near her grandson. That's enough to send Judge Lake over the edge. Your daughter's putting her dreams, opening her legs, trying to get a dream up between her legs instead of having a dream in her mind. And you want to argue with this woman across this courtroom. Come on now. Now y'all have made me crazy. Y'all think y'all crazy, I'm crazy for these kids and this baby. You ain't gonna do this to this child. The reaction of Ms. Sissom was just beyond disrespectful and uncalled for. Judge Lauren wasn't going to let them get away with this, and so she rightfully calls them out for their ignorant behavior in this serious case. So Ms. Renfro, why do you believe Mr. Tuzi is denying paternity? <laughs> He don't want to take financial responsibility. He hasn't been there. He wasn't there through my pregnancy. When I had the baby, he, my baby, he wasn't there. Um, for his surgery, he wasn't there. I've contacted him. I tried to let him know, and there was still nothing, no response, no, uh, you know, forget about, you know, nothing. Things start off messy in the courtroom when Danielle Renfro states that she wants to prove paternity because Andrea Tuzzi has to take responsibility for his son, six-month-old Kendall who has a medical condition that's been allegedly passed down. So wait a minute, you saw text messages which indicated that you may not be the biological father of a child and you can't remember none of them? It's, it's not that I don't remember, I just didn't know what He was being right. nosy and trying to find something he could find. Well, do you find. remember being in a sexual relationship with Ms. Renfro? Yes, I do, ma'am. Do you remember not using protection? Mr. Tuzzi reasons that the child looked nothing like him. Ms. Renfrau reveals that Mr. Tuzzi ghosted her when she became pregnant because he thought it was one of her exes, all because of some messages he'd seen on her phone. But you do understand that despite all of that, it has zero relevance as it relates to this child born to this woman. Yes, Your Honor. My son has an issue with his, his stomach. He was born with what you call Hirschberger's disease, and it's passed through genetics. And none of my other kids have it. Tuzi says that something like this had happened to him before, in a relationship where the mother claimed he was the father, but he turned out not to be. Judge Lake obviously tells him that holds no relevance in this case. You're my son deserves to know who his dad is because of his the issues he has with his health and... He, he just needs to take responsibility. Ms. Renfrau gets emotional talking about the struggles her son has gone through because of Hirschsprung's disease. So, Mr. Tuzzi, do you have this disease, Hirschsprung's? Do you have this? No, Your Honor. 
Does anyone in your family have issues with their intestinal tract? No, no, Your Honor. And you don't have this disease no, in your... Renfrau denies being with someone else during the time of conception, but Mr. Tuzi calls her out by asking why another man signed the birth certificate. It's stressful. It's hard. I My son has to see a surgeon twice a month. Um, he's in and out of the hospital with infections in his intestines. And my son deserves to know who his dad is. And it is zero doubt in your mind. Whenever you had a baby then. Because you ignored my calls and texts. Judge Lake is appalled that Tuzi's testimony is based on the fact that the child can't be his because he's not as dark as he should be. On the other hand, she asks Ms. Renfro what the past six months have been like. Well, there was like somebody that she had slept with around time, but it was, it was you know, she was Hold on, don't gloss over that. <laughs> don't talk so fast. Sorry. <laughs> you said there was a guy she had slept with during the time? Well, it was a little before she got pregnant. The same person that signed the birth certificate. It wasn't her ex. It was... So it, I think it was a... Co it was Ms. Renfro brings in her witness to the courtroom in an attempt to strengthen her arguments. Her best friend accidentally slips up and mentions that Ms. Renfro was intimate with another man during the same time, which was shocking. Oh, oh, wait, hold on! Hold on, Ms. Renfro! Come on out! You're getting a whole nother little attitude now! I want to see it! So you say stuff happens? Yes, ma'am. Oh, it sure does! Sure it does. sure does! That ain't my baby. So you say stuff happened? Yes, ma'am. So why don't you testify to... All is well up until the point when Judge Lake calls Ms. Renfrau's best friend to the stand. And during her testimony, she lets it slip that Renfrau had indeed slept with someone during the time of conception. I'm just thinking that how I know for a fact this ain't my kid. She How do you just, know, she though? Just proved, she just how do you it. Know? That don't prove nothing because of who I slept with. That don't mean nothing. I use the condom, so there is no other option. It's you. But you were sleeping around, though. I wasn't sleeping around. If we wasn't together, it don't matter who I was sleeping with. Ms. Renfro dropped the sweet act completely and admitted to sleeping with one other person, but said that they used a condom. Judge Lake rightfully shuts down that argument by saying, if she really believes they really are 100% effective. The reason why I think she's really trying to come after me is because I work two jobs and I take care but of my I've own But I've never asked him for a dollar. But I've never asked him for a dollar. The minute the baby was born, you called me up and asked you me. You didn't answer the phone when I, when I, my ex was at the hospital with me. Why when, would I answer the phone knowing that you're it, trying to put a baby on me that it ain't my baby? So but what, what do you think her M.O. is, Mr. Tuesday? She's just trying to get money out of me. That's it. Regardless of the truth coming out, Renfrau still sticks to the story that the kids are his, even though she slept with the other dude during the time of conception. Then Mr. Tuzi reveals why she might be trying so hard to prove it's his. I'm here, that sort of helps to explain it. And Hirschsprung's disease is also known as toxic megacolon. And it's a rare disorder where the individuals that are affected lack nerve supply and muscle tone to the large intestine and the rectum. So what happens is, is that stool starts to back up and stretch the intestine. This is a normal- Judge Lake calls in a doctor to help her understand Hirschsprung's disease. And she reveals that there's a chance that the child could get it, even if both the parents have no history of it. Regardless of the fact, Mr. Tuzi still believes he is not the father. This testimony changed your view at all about your possibility of being Kendall's biological father? No, it doesn't. Of it course, because he's a deadbeat. It does not. Typical deadbeat answer. I'm gonna need you to show a little bit more concern for this baby, Mr. Tuzi. I, I I'm working with you. When Judge Lauren asks Mr. Tuzi if he thinks this disproves his doubt, he says no. And that's when Ms. Renfrau jumps in to call Mr. Tuzi a plethora of insults, which was just uncalled for in a case like this where the stakes are high. Mr. Tuzi, you are not the father. Yes! Oops. Told you! Oops. Calm down, Mr. Calm down. Tuzi. <sighs> Calm down. This ain't a stadium, and the child's life is... It turns out that Mr. Tuzi was not the father, and he literally started to jump around like he was in a stadium. Ms. Renfrau didn't look surprised, and she revealed that she knew all along that Mr. Tuzi wasn't the father, which gets Judge Lauren furious. Because you were so dramatic about how Mr. Tuzi had never done anything. Oh, and you cried... Hold on. You cried yourself a river in this courtroom, baby. All the time, never testifying to the whole truth. And that's wrong. And that's what you need to change in this moment. All that smirking and all that little smart mouth nonsense, you know where it got?